us that you would like to share? Or maybe you have a question about the Bible. Here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers. Stay tuned for a live call-in program entitled Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. Welcome to another Saturday edition of Prayer and Answers. Hope that you are having a wonderful Saturday and that all is well with you today. And if it's not well, that's okay. I hope that it'll bring you to a closer relationship to Jesus. My name is Randy Smith, and with me in studio, as n- normal, is my co-host, Dr. Steve Kovac. And Steve, how are you doing this fine Saturday? Pretty good. And now are you you working okay with this cold front that moved through? Not supposed to be over 97 today. Yeah, I got... I was looking at the temperature gauge in my car, and it said 89. Wow. And I said, wow, I've never seen that for a while. Yeah. It's uh, (laughs) it's been the last couple of days have been very nice. You ready to take some phone calls this afternoon? Let's do that. All right. Let me give out the phone number. It's 915-779-0016. And Steve and I are are here to take your phone calls if you have a question about uh, scriptures or if you have a prayer request. Uh, we'd love to uh, take your prayer request with you to the Lord, and together we will pray. And uh, then we'll watch and see what God will do with that prayer request. Let's go to our first caller. Good afternoon, Minerva. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, I have a question, uh, Pastor. You got me thinking the last time when I asked for prayer uh, for a baby from an uh, unwed couple, and it got me thinking your response on how I should... Um, deal with people or interact with people anyway so my co-worker at work uh, is a christian and her daughter now is pregnant not married and i know a lot of that happens and mistakes are made i've always told my daughter if that ever happens although i won't be celebrating like yay yay uh, you know uh you don't ever have to have an abortion you bring the baby and you know we deal with it and we have the baby so my question is i am not gonna to go to the baby shower and congratulations and all of that, but even a, a little bag of diapers or something, just, I don't know, I don't know where the balance is to encourage kids to have the baby if they are pregnant and not have an abortion. I, you know what I mean or no? Yes. Okay. Um, our church had to wrestle with this not, okay. not too long ago. Um, one of the uh, one of the people in leadership uh, uh, their children um, more than once had uh, it had been a topic been a concern because their children were sexually active Uh and um, and in fact it ended up um, bringing discipline uh, upon the, the father N- not anything mean or punishing or anything like right. that but it's, we're, we're trying to make a statement in a world that's gone nuts that um, okay. ha- have being married is the way God made things and it, right. it, it, many many yeah. church people couldn't understand our position but then what we came up with you know what what ended up happening was his daughter was pregnant out of wedlock and he was a minister, and uh, we, the, the question came about having a, uh, a baby shower for her. And so there were conflicting principles involved, and it was very difficult to work our way through um, because we, the, the daughter, you know, had talked to the Lord about what she had done, and she had she had told the Lord that she uh, was sorry, and uh, that she had done wrong. I'm not saying she told the church. She she genuinely had a repentance with the Lord, and and we wanted to support and to love her, and at the same time, there's little girls growing up in the church. And you want to make the statement to the little girls growing up in the church, this is not the right way to do it. And so do we have the baby shower or not? And it was a very, very difficult question. And so the issue was, how could we support this young lady in now her difficult time 
and help her and love her and care for her, be a part of what she's going to have to walk through, and at the same time, um, uh, not send the wrong message to... Right. Which even people right now listening to me right now, there's people going, well, you guys are just way too legalistic. <laughs> however, no. however, when you look at the mass destruction that takes place in people who... Uh, have sex out of wedlock, who live together Amen. before they get married, have children without two parents in the home. It's not legalistic. It's the most. Uh, it's like telling somebody, "Hey, don't drink that bottle of bleach," and they go, "Well, you're just being legalistic." No, I'm. Exactly. I'm, I'm saying, please don't drink the bottle of bleach. That's right. And if you do drink the bottle of bleach, I'm going to rush you to the hospital. As I tell all of the people who just watched you drink it, don't drink the bottle of bleach. Right. So. Exactly. So you're going to have to find a way to let her know how much you love her and how much you are there for her. And at the same time, not, not celebrate this um, in such a way that others might go, well, this is accepted behavior. And the difficulty with that is, in our society, it is accepted behavior. And so you're going to be standing against society and a huge portion of the church to even suggest that there's a better way to do things. Steve, what are your yeah. thoughts on it? Well, I think you've, you've dealt with it more than I have, and so uh, my thought is you don't have a shower, okay, and you don't participate in a shower, but you find a way to get her all the stuff to, she to, needs. To, to, to me administer to her financial needs. Okay, that's a good point, too. Yeah, don't maybe don't throw a party, but find a way to walk with her now, if she's unrepentant, I, I won't walk with her. Because what, not because I'm trying to make a political statement or anything, but because she, her life is going to be a mess until she gets right with the Lord. So if she's unrepentant, it's, it's just like, sweetheart, you're on your own. But if she's saying, if she's saying, you know what, I did wrong, and and um, and this was not the way to go, and now here I am. Well, now every resource that we have needs to be at her disposal. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because her mom is goes to church and is my coworker, and she says, well, you know, I know she should be married, but you know, what the baby, and I'm just, and she's very happy, and I'm just going like. Uh, you know, I told my daughter, you get pregnant, you don't ever have to consider an abortion. I mean, I will we'll take care of the baby. But yeah, so uh, finding a balance. Okay, gentlemen, that was my big question. Yeah, and so let, I, let love guide you, okay? Okie dokie. And no. then right now, I'm sure I'll hear another, I have another question after I hear the calls, and I hope everybody calls in. Okay, before you go, Minerva, we were yes. asking a question about you. Next to your oh, name yes. here is a smiley face. On the on our on our screen here, there's a smiley face, and uh, yeah. so we were asking Kenny, "What is this smiley face?" And he said that you you had said that you were, what was it? Did you say to Kenny? Did you uh, say you were the smiley face or what? Oh, I told him to put a smiley face because to put a, I didn't want to give it to so, you guys for being the first caller. So Steve. Don't say what that's So Steve says, so does she identify as a smiley person? Because, <laughs> because he has to teach courses in, in a university where people identify with all of these different things, and we were talking about that, oh, and he goes, he goes, should I ask her if she identifies <laughs> as a smiley person? That is so funny. I wanted to beat Ray because Ray was the first call last week. Oh, okay. Right. And so I called super early, yeah. And then when Kenny put me on hold, I said, I'm not going to irritate them. He goes, am I? And he says, no, they're not going to hear the phone ring. And the light's going to blink. I said, okay, put my name with a smiley face. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for thank calling you. in, Minerva. God bless you guys. Okay, bye-bye. Right. I know it seems heartless, but, Steve, there was a time when our society so looked down upon feminism, uh, effeminate men, I should say, effeminate men, and marry, uh, wedding, I'm sorry, childbirth out of wedlock, that it caused people to, even if they weren't believers, they didn't want to, to, uh, to be outcast, and, right. so, and so they would practice um, <laughs> celibacy. Yes. <laughs> Uh, because because society, societal pressure, yep. and now the opposite is happening. If you if you even hint 
that maybe there's a, yeah. a better way. You're a bigot and a homophobe. Yeah. And, a, you and they know. want to celebrate it. Uh, yeah. And you become, to... you become special. See. Yes. And, and a, a pastor then who reads the Bible to his congregation becomes, they, they would say, you know, uh, they would say it's uh, it's racism and and white supremacy and yeah because that's just all the they Bible. can do it's that's just, right which was written by a Jew by yeah. Jewish people you yes. know so <laughs> that doesn't bot- st- stop them so <laughs> so um, Steve and I are not in any way mean and we we want to love folks and all of us are sinners and uh, and we we love the sinner but we also um, want to preach uh, holiness and righteousness not in a legalistic fashion, but in in a life-saving fashion. And we want people to understand that you don't celebrate certain kinds of behaviors. Yeah, and and, and then so um, you live in a culture where that is the norm. Yeah. And so you have to say, well, why are you celebrating with them? And then you say to people who do celebrate with them, what is it that's so special? Yeah or unique or better and what is it about that that's what's more important is behavior not not who you identify as yeah our heroes today (laughs) the people that our society now celebrates and they're our heroes are the people who have absolutely no willpower or ability to say no in any way they just kind of float along and that's 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 the new hero. Yeah, you know, and, so. and then also the other group of people are people who have mental illnesses. And what do we do with them? We we celebrate them. We have to, don't we? Yeah. Imagine this. Imagine that I'm sitting here playing Russian roulette. I had a 38 revolver in my hand, and you saw me load one shell in there. And I was spinning the revolver and going click up against my head and spinning it and going click up against my head. And you k- ran over and you said, stop that. And you grabbed the revolver and took it out of my hand. In today's society, you would be arrested <laughs> for infringing upon my my rights and my yeah. identification. Well, you can't, you, can't, and, you can't express it publicly. So you're getting to the place where I don't know whether it happens here or not, but let's say you have a gay, a gay pride March, yeah, and somebody would stand on the corner and preach the gospel, yeah. not condemning them in any way, and not even calling them names, just preaching the gospel. You would be arrested in some places, yes, or using a a, a wrong pronoun. Or you could use any swear word you wanted to, but well, not a pronoun. And I was talking to a friend today that uh, he was sitting on public property uh, with a banner that simply it was a pro life banner. It was just you know simply about saying, you know, don't have an abortion. Uh, And uh, he's Catholic, Mm -hmm. and he was uh, across the street from um, a Catholic event, and the Catholics were coming over and just chastising him for having such a bigoted position, which is very terrifying because in El Paso, it was the Catholic Church that used to be the the great defender of the unborn. And so... um, it just tells you how far we've 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 come, and uh, there's no there's no brakes on the caboose, and the train's running yeah. downhill. So, so the church has to deal with these things, yeah. and they haven't been, and they have to confront it head on. And if you do, you get the privilege of pastoring a small church, which is really a good thing. It's much yeah. more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go to our phone lines. Good afternoon, Nancy. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Hi. Um, I wanted to call in and uh, mention some things that I think are very important to what you've been talking about. Okay. Um, uh, I am a native El Pasoan, and I married somebody in the military, and off I went to Germany uh, in my 20s. And I um, wasn't sure about the person that I married. I wasn't sure about him being a good father. But at the end... um, towards the middle, actually the middle, it was almost as if God said, look, okay, he won't go to church with you, he's not talking to you, but I need you. It was almost like I got that conversation. So I started going to church, and I had a wonderful chaplain who uh, was a great teacher, and at that point I was going to the Catholic chapel on Sunday nights, and God would, it provided a wonderful ending to the day on Sunday. And I think it's like sometimes we get lost in college 
which is something Tony Evans had said on his program. And God says, look, I still need you. Now come here. So I did. And I chose to become pregnant on my way going back through Fort Knox for maybe a year with my husband. And at the, and he did not plan on being married to me, and I never knew it. And he had moved himself, I didn't realize, to another area away from where we were stationed, from Mannheim. But I still didn't know that. And I didn't know that until two years after I was at Fort Hood. And I'd already had my two-year-old wonderful daughter at, at Fort Knox. And I had found out about natural family planning at Fort Knox at a chapel program. And I thought, how neat. That's logical. That uses each woman's um, ability to be pregnant no matter which cycle she's on. So when I got to Fort Hood, we had training from a lady named Marge Harrigan. There were about 20 of us. And she taught us, and we had to go back uh, and get uh, retrained or recertified, and I taught at Fort Hood. Okay, I'm gonna they, let me they, let me let me rein you. Need, let, yeah, let yeah. me let me rein you in, Nancy. Okay. Yeah. Because it's just an hour show, and so yeah. let me and and we do want to have some other um, folks call in, but yeah, um, I want to give you a reference to something. Okay. Uh, yeah. Tim Keller, and you can find it on YouTube. Oh, Tim, I know him. All right. Yeah. He he. Um, has he and his wife Kathy now? Now Tim Keller passed yeah. away a month or so, yeah. like a couple of months, months ago. Yeah. They have, um, and, I, and this is for all of our listeners. There, they had a seminar, and you can find it on YouTube on marriage. And they do mm -hmm. an excellent, um, a, an expose first of all on what happens when people do not practice marriage biblically. Yeah. And, and childbearing biblically and you would think you know people are thinking it would be better if we didn't have to follow the bible but actually the devastation and disaster um, absolutely and uh um and when we do follow the bible and the biblical way of doing things the wonder that happens and so uh, i don't have time to go into it today but i would encourage everybody uh, uh marriage in the gospel is what it's called by tim keller and uh, take a look at that, and, and they do a wonderful job on that. But uh, well, thank I, you. For I realize it, and, but uh, it doesn't include me. I'm 73. I'm a natural family planning teacher, right. and nobody wants me to teach their children. Well, listen, or, listen, Nancy. You know, I got to tell you something. I'm a pastor of a gospel, of the gospel ministry, and nobody wants to hear the gospel either. So <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but listen, well, I'm, I, here's you. something that here's something that the great real estate real estate mogul Ron Legrand said back in the 1980s, yeah. listen very closely, when talking about presenting deals, and it works for what you're doing, and it works for pastors mm -hmm. also, someone will, someone won't, and someone's waiting. The way yeah. that Jesus put it was, kick the dust off of your shoes and move on to the True. next person, okay? So True. you keep True. doing what you're doing, and it's and just, just th some will, some won't, and someone's waiting. So we got we got to head to that one. And right now the All break right. is waiting on us. So I got to run. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. God bless you. Bye bye. Well, that's wonderful having Nancy and Minerva call in so quickly. We didn't get a chance to beg, and in fact, we're out of time for this first part of our of our program here, Steve. Yeah, let's give the phone number though nine one five seven seven nine zero zero one six. Please call. And we'll take a break and be back in just a moment. This is Max Lucado. When our oldest daughter was two, I lost her in a department store. I panicked. All of a sudden, only one thing mattered. I had to find Jenna. Shopping was forgotten. The list of things I came to get was unimportant. I yelled her name. What people thought did not matter. Every ounce of energy had one goal, to find my lost child. I did, by the way. She was hiding behind some jackets. No price is too high for a parent to pay to redeem his child. No energy is too great, no effort too demanding. A parent will go to any length to find his or her own. So will God. Mark it down. God's greatest creation is not the flung stars or the gorged canyons. It's his eternal plan to reach his children. Heaven and earth know no greater passion than God's personal passion for you and your return. Hi, ladies. 
Have you been longing to get away to a women's conference, but haven't had the time or resources? Well, Coronado Baptist Church will be hosting a Priscilla Shire simulcast on Saturday, August 26th, 8.30 a.m. till 2.30 p.m. The cost is $20, which includes lunch and snacks. Child care is available for children up to age five. Please call the church office for tickets and reservations, 584-3912. That's 584-3912. The address is 501 Thunderbird at the corner of West Wind and Thunderbird. Again, Saturday, August 26th. I hope to see you there. We invite you to tune in on Sundays at 9.30 in the morning for a new program that we've added to our lineup, Living on the Edge with Chip Ingram. Again, that's Living on the Edge with pastor, teacher, and author Chip Ingram. 9.30 Sunday morning. May God bless you through this teaching program here on KELP, your Christian radio station, reaching families, changing lives. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Phone number here is 915-779-0016. And Steve Kovac and I are here to take your questions on uh, the Bible or uh, maybe things that are going on in the world to uh, also to uh, um, uh, take your prayer request and join with you uh, in praying. And there's one of this one thing that I'd like um, to to say about that. Um, in the book of Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew chapter 5 and starting in uh, verse 1, he says, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he, is, he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be uh, comforted. Um, there's one part of the Christian faith that I of whether it's because psychology has become so predominant or or maybe we've had so many conferences that talk about the steps of mourning and so forth that I think that we have lost something that um, that the Lord gave us as the body of Christ as a fellowship of the called out ones um, we're, we mourn together when one hurts, we all hurt. When one celebrates, we all celebrate. Th- this is the will of God, and we've, we've become almost clinical in our Christian psychology, and we'll, we'll you know, talk to people about, well, here are the steps that you're gonna go through with mourning, when what's really needed is somebody to just sit down and listen, and I know that this may sound counterintuitive, to weep with you. The reason for that is there's a recognition. I mean, we don't we don't need to fix the problem right now. Could we first of all just take a breath and take a moment and have a recognition of my brother or my sister is hurting? Why do why do we want to rush right past that? Because I think it's because it takes an emotional investment when one is hurting, we all hurt. It's it's why we have the program of prayer and answers, we pray together. And it's it's not just a clinical thing that we're doing here. We're not just, uh, okay, you tell me what's your prayer request. All right, you want a new Cadillac. What color do you want it? Okay, let me pray for your Cadillac. Or you, you've got a problem with your daughter. Let me pray for your daughter. Or this. No, there's the there's the conversation. There's there's a, a one person saying, here's what's on my mind. And an audience out there in the city listening and joining together with that person and feeling what they're feeling and being a part of it and saying, hey, I, I recognize that. that. I acknowledge that that hurts. Um, and, and I'm here with you. You are not alone in this. Can I, can I bring up something Please. in particular? Because that kind of struck me what happened just on Friday. So... Um, I know I talked to, well, I don't talk much on the radio show, but I talked to Randy about uh, the interim church ministry. Mm -hmm. And the guy who runs it uh, for Texas Baptist is named uh, Carl Fickling. And so Carl uh, emailed us, and I'm sure I have permission to do this, to say that he has uh, esophageal cancer. Mm -hmm. 
and they don't know how, what degree, what stage. They don't. Th- they think they caught it early. But Nothing worse for a pastor. Yeah, but um, you know he has to be, uh, you know, quiet and cautious. Yeah. So, anyway, it just it, it broke my heart. It's supposed to. And it just and it, somebody may go well. What's the point? You know, I guess the John Wayne fans. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe going, well, real men, you know, wouldn't hurt for the other guy. Well, <laughs> but And yet Jesus wept when he saw the sorrows yeah, so, of Mary and Martha. So sometimes in the middle, you know, we're busy doing A, B, C, and then I see something like this on an email. Yeah. And it just shook me. Yeah, and it should. Um, uh, <laughs> we were before the, <laughs> the program again. Steve and I were kind of laughing a little bit before the program because Steve <laughs> said you know I don't even know how to describe this world it's 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 and I go it's damned <laughs> and he goes well you can't say that you know <laughs> and, and uh, um, no it things are tough here and getting tougher by the day and so Steve and I are here um, because there's an audience listening that is sitting there waiting on your problem, believe it or not, that when you call with your problem, we're all sitting here listening and hurting with you, and if nothing else, acknowledging that, yes, that that is painful. And then we may find a Bible verse that, that comforts. The, the Lord tells us that God is the God of all comfort and that that we've received comfort. comfort. Steve and I have gone through some hard times and God comforted us. And in that comfort that we received, we're able then to share and and hopefully uh, to comfort you. Um, In the church, there will be times when somebody is on a mountain and somebody else is in the valley. And, uh, And then those positions switch. And so we just, we need to be ready to listen and um, to be a part of what our brother and sister in the Lord is going through. Now, um, on the other hand, we also are supposed to speak the truth in love. So <laughs> when, if somebody calls in and says, you know, I have uh, my, f- my family is a disaster, um, and, and the reason their family is a disaster is because of things that they're doing, then with love and gentleness, we'll say, well, the Bible says to do it this way. And, and we're trying to, to maybe um, give you an alternative way of doing things to alleviate some of the suffering. But much of the suffering that goes on in the church is caused by people outside of the church, and they, it impacts us, particularly with our lost family members. So if you've got a heartache um, and, uh, and would like someone to pray with you, that's what we're here for. And the reason we do it on the air is so that everyone who's listening will be able to bow their heads and pray along with us. The phone number, 915-779-0016. And Kenny, I think we'll we'll take a break and um, be back in just a few minutes with more prayer and answers. Weekend Magazine, KELP. We invite you to tune in this Saturday at 5 p.m. in the afternoon for a special program entitled Think Different, Live Different, The Free Gift of God, presented by God-Centered Life Ministries with Pastor Josh Moody. That's Saturday, 5 p.m., Think Different, Live Different, The Free Gift of God by Josh Moody. May God bless you through this teaching program here on KELP. This is John MacArthur with more Portraits of Grace. Many people who think they're citizens of Christ's kingdom will someday be shocked to discover they are not. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Some who call Christ king behave as if his kingdom means nothing to them. But Jesus said that true kingdom citizens obey the Father. In fact, he equated the kingdom with a pearl so valuable that a merchant sold all he had to purchase it. In other words, it's worth any sacrifice you have to make. Do you value his kingdom like that? 
This is John MacArthur praying you're continuing to be portraits of grace. I was facing foreclosure, and they guaranteed they would get my loan modified. I paid them a fee and never heard from them again. Anyone can be a victim of a loan modification scam, but you don't have to be. Know the signs. Get the facts. Visit www.loanscamalert.org. For trusted government-approved help and a reporter scam, call 1-888-995-HOPE. That's 1-888-995-4673. And we are back with more prayer and answers. And would you look at that? The Lord has provided once again. We have another phone call. Good afternoon, Mark. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. You mentioned something to the uh, second woman that called the one after Minerva. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned offhandedly that you preach the gospel and people don't want to hear the gospel. Right. You are correct, sir, because uh, I was reading John MacArthur's biography about 12 years ago. His very first sermon at Grace Community Church was titled Playing Church. Hmm. And they, when he was asked about it by Phil Johnson uh, about 50 years later, he said to Phil, well, the reason I preached on Matthew chapter 7, playing church, is because I knew the board of directors who hired me were not saved. Hmm. The choir behind me was not saved. <laughs> the congregation in front of me was not saved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, I've been, and when I, uh, about 41 years ago, I took a job in Corpus Christi, and I was attending Windsor Park Baptist, Baptist Church with Pastor Mike Reed, who was a fire and brimstone preacher, and he convicted us every Sunday, and I loved him. And I was dating this young lady, and I said, Lisa, Mike Reed is fabulous, and she said they want to fire him. Yeah, I said, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she Listen. said, because 80% of the people who go to church just want to play church. They don't want to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And uh, that, that's four out of five people. I want to I want to read to you a Bible verse, um, something that Paul was saying about apostles, yes. about, and these were true apostles. This is from Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. He says, for we... And he was talking about himself as a preacher. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance of death to death. To the other, the fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things is the question he asked. So he's saying we're the aroma of Christ. And he's saying to the people who are perishing, Christ smells horrible. And to the people who who are being saved, Christ smells wonderful. Um, and so, to, in my thinking, if a person comes to our church and they are not a believer, they should hate our church very much very soon. If they are a believer, they should love the church and never want to leave. Now, I, I don't try to make them hate the church. But if, if they hear the gospel, because I'm not, I don't just, I don't preach a salvation message. I just preach the whole Bible. If they, if they're seeing, if Christ is in our midst and the word of Je words of Jesus are being said, those who are not his are going to hate us with a passion and they're going to want out of there. And those who are his are going to love it and never want to leave. And since, since most Christians aren't Christians. Um, it leaves you with a small congregation, <laughs> which is wonderful. Yes. All right. Well, Mark, thank you very much for the call. I've got another caller, and you call back, okay? okay? All right. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Is this Maria? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Talk to me, Maria. You're on. Okay. Um... On Revelation chapter 14, the harvest of the earth, um, I'll read you a little bit of what I don't understand okay. so that you can tell me if I'm right, if I'm wrong, or what it is. Uh, on 14, I, I looked, 
And there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man. That's one of my questions. With a crown of gold. That's another one. On his head, on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called out in a loud voice to him who was sitting on on the cloud. That's another question. Uh, an, an angel, if if it's Jesus or if it's God, why why would this angel call out loud in a voice to him? So that's like three questions. I'm sorry, I don't know. No, understand. it's okay. We'll go over them one at a time. Steve's got his Bible open there to Revelation 14. And so your first question is this angel with the sickle. You're asking, is that Christ? Uh, I'm asking the the man sit. No. Seated on the cloud was one like right. a sentiment, like where it says like, I imagine it's like not Jesus, or is it Jesus, or who is it? There you go, that's the question. So yeah. have you got that verse there, Steve? I'm looking no. up something else right now. I don't know what's the verse number. Cause what I, verse number uh, is it? 14. 14. Mm -hmm. okay. Har the harvest of the earth. Okay. All righty. Um, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, the, so the the first part of the question is, is like a son of man. Yes. Okay. So, what does he have on his head? He has a golden crown, and what does yes. he have in his hand? He has a sharp sickle. Yes. Okay. Now, who else would have a crown on his head and a sickle? Sickle represents judgment, uh, yes. separating the wheat from the chaff. Do you know what? Yes. what it means to separate the wheat from the chaff yes. so he's separating that's what the harvest is about and then you have a crown on their head okay so so like a son of man you have to remember that john is seeing uh, visions yes okay it's a vision. so that's why it says like so any any time that you read the book of revelation and most of the time when john is talking he's talking in symbols okay so he's yeah. not going to be real specific this one's one of the clearer symbols um, that represents represents Jesus, Jesus. so so the, yes yeah, so he's a son of man so where do we get the idea of the son of man the son of man Jesus called himself many times the son of man Okay. okay, the book Jesus. of if you look at if you look at the book of Daniel, uh, even in the Old Testament, when it was referring to Jesus, it referred to the concept of Son of Man. Now that doesn't mean that every time Son of Man is used in the Old Testament that it referred to Jesus, but Jesus self referred to himself as the Son of Man. So let me start with that, and then I'm sure Randy has something to add, and then we'll see if we can uh, go from. But does that does that make sense to you? Yes, so, yeah, so you have to know why why we would see that. So many many things in the book of Revelation require interpretation, whether it's happening in the church age, which is the age in which we live, between the first and second coming, and then or whether it's speaking of the end time. And this is this is one of those things where you have the sickle and the crown that represents uh, Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 And then, so you you asked about um, the the person, and you asked about the crown, and then you had another yes. ask a, yes. a question after that. Um, I wrote down Jesus, but I put a question mark because I wasn't too sure. So I did write down Jesus Good. in my Bible. Okay. And then where it says, with a crown of of gold on his head, uh, I don't know if I've ever read that Jesus had a a crown of gold, but you have to. You'll be the one to tell me. Uh, oh. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't remember reading him having a crown of gold. Well, okay. So when it, when it's talking about about him being sovereign and reigning, it's at that. It's just accepted that he would have a crown of gold. In oh. fact. Okay. <laughs> What is it? Seven crowns that he has on his head. Yes. It speaks of seven crowns. That and he and has the seven isn't a literal yeah, it's number. Not, it's, it's, it's how it's do you put number. seven crowns on your head? But it represents something. So whether or not he's he's going to have a, it represents his sovereignty, though. Okay. So. Okay. Um, and then did you have another question after that, yeah, Maria? Okay. Yes. Yes. I do. 
but uh, okay, so we're still on Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. um, that will be okay. Thank you. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him yeah. who was sitting like that, like he like yelled at him. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand that. Would right. if it was Jesus would. If it was Jesus, would he be yelling at him? Right, I, I, and it's not yelling in, in a disrespectful term, but okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my oar in the water, okay? So okay. I'm going to start just for the folks that are listening, and let's try to deconfuse yeah, this. Yeah, help okay? me, help me. Yeah. <laughs> Starting with chapter 14, verse 14, Then I looked, behold, a white cloud, and seated on the cloud, one like a son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the crown, Put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle across the earth, and the earth was reaped. And then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, the angel who had authority over the fire, and he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of earth for its grapes of wrath. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grapes of harvest and, and in the earth and threw it into a great wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden outside of the city and the blood flowed from the wine press as high as a horse's bridle for 1600 stadia. So this is talking about um, a, a harvest, and it's talking also about judgment at the end of days. And so I'm going to take you to Matthew chapter 13, okay? Okay. Are you, do you have your Bible there with you? I have it right here on the slide. I had written down what I was going to ask only. Okay. So um, that's all right. I, I'll, I'll okay. read slowly. But what okay. I want you to understand is that in the book of Revelation, it is presenting to us pictures. It's like a picture book. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you were a little girl before you could read and there would be picture books and you could, mm -hmm. and the pictures would actually tell the story? You didn't need to be able to read. You could yes. kind of see what was going on, right? Yes. Well, the book of Revelations is very much like that, although it's using words to make the pictures. Okay? okay. Mm -hmm. And so, do you remember, like, um, they would almost put it in a code this always represents mom and this always represents dad and they would put the pictures together yeah yeah so the book of revelation is written very much like that it uses words to draw pictures in your minds but those pictures all represent something they represent concepts they re represent constructs okay so matthew chapter 13 now jesus is teaching very very clearly about that day that, that Revelation 14 is talking about. And here's what it says, starting in verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone, I'm sorry, just a moment. I want to move down a little bit further. I don't think I want to start there. You may want to go down to the parable of the weeds. Maybe it is, let me see. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Uh, verse 36 is where I want to start. Oh. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to, same, to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. So here Jesus had, has told a picture story. And now the disciples don't get it. So they say, Would you explain this picture story to us? And so Jesus is going to explain the code, explain the picture story. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. Now here... He is absolutely talking about himself. Son of man was the favorite title that Jesus used for himself, but he's not the only one that is referred to in that way. Sometimes an angel will be referred to as he looked like the son of man. Okay, but here he is absolutely saying that the son of, that he is this person. The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. Now, here's what Jesus is saying. Maria, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Absolutely. And so one day you, you confessed him as Lord and Savior? Yes. Yeah, okay. He says you are a seed that he planted in the earth. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Okay, it says the field is the world and the good seed is the sons or the sons and daughters of the kingdom and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. Now, is your neighbor a believer in Jesus Christ? Um, no. Okay, well, who planted him? <laughs> the evil one planted him right next to you. And yeah. The, and the two of you are going to grow together as next door neighbors, you as a, as a seed of the kingdom and him as a seed of the devil. Okay? Oh, it wow. says, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. Now look, and the reapers are angels. Okay. So there's debate on who this person is in Revelation 14. Because of Matthew 13, I would say that these reapers that you're seeing in Revelation 14 are angels. And then it says, okay. now it doesn't matter though. Actually, it doesn't matter because what's what's happening there is what th is what's so important. It says, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. I want you to notice the first sickle that came in pulled up all of the believers. The second sickle that came in pulled up the weeds. In this case, it was grapes, grapes of wrath for judgment. It says the Son of Man, that's Jesus, will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers. What you're seeing in Revelation chapter 14, the world has, good, has Christians sown, believers in Jesus. Every time somebody becomes a believer in Jesus, they're still in the world. And then it also has lost people, and it's saying, don't separate it right now. Wait until the end of the age. And at the end of the age, the Son of Man, Jesus, is going to remove everyone from his kingdom who is not a believer. And it says, and he'll throw them into the fiery furnace in that place. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let them hear. Okay. Oh wow! <laughs> I think uh, I was reading everything like just like you corrected me right there. Well, it's only because I was I was interpreting interpreting the book of Revelation uh -huh. from the book of Matthew, and guys like Steve and I, we get all of our days to just kind of <laughs> immerse ourselves in scriptures. And so that's why God put teachers is just to help out with things like that. But here's the glorious thing. The person next door to you could become a son of the kingdom with the gospel message. He could be radically transformed and born again, and that's why you're planted next door to him. Wow. And at the end really? of the age, which we're getting very, very close to, yes. if he hasn't heard the gospel and, and, and surrendered to Christ, then a sickle is going to come into the earth and cut him off, and he's going to be thrown into judgment forever and the reason why the sickle hasn't already come is because of God's grace as he's giving people an opportunity to repent and something else for you to consider people frequently ask they go how come all of these tornadoes hurricanes earthquakes why is all of this happening well first of all they are acts of judgment from God on a rebellious world that hates him and spits in his face constantly. They are his judgments on that world. But just like the ten plagues that hit Egypt uh -huh. caused a whole bunch of Egyptians to believe in God, every time there's an earthquake or a hurricane, it causes people, some, will look to heaven and say, hey, you know what? I." Maybe I need a savior. <laughs> Things are getting bad. And so even when he's doing the judgment in these days, when he brings judgment, it is still an act of mercy and grace because it gives your neighbor an opportunity to come to Jesus. Maria, what I want you to do, I want you to, to meditate on the Word of God. I want you to spend a lot of time in prayer. I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God so that someday... And I want you to be praying for your neighbor. Yes. And someday there may be a hurricane or an earthquake or a flood, 
and he's standing in the driveway next to your house and he just goes I just don't know what I'm going to do and the spirit of God will be right there to open your mouth and you can tell him about your Jesus Amen. Okay. and maybe you can tell him about the harvest at the end of the age well I have been looking for an opportunity well, let's, you know what, I'm going to ask Steve oh. to pray for you right now, Maria, okay? okay yes. So that you'll have that opportunity with your neighbor, okay? Yes. okay? Yes. Steve, well, while I take a sip of coffee, would you like pray? <laughs> okay. Lord, thank you for Maria. Thank you for her heart to understand your word and, and the mysterious aspects that many times the book of Revelation presents. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, um, help her to learn your word. Uh, yeah. to understand the importance of, of the, her faith and how to express it to others yeah. and the uh, Lord how to uh, walk with you through these these dangerous times yeah. and so Lord uh, thank you for working thank you for giving her uh, wisdom and uh, thank you for helping her to walk with you and just use this time in her life to to grow in relationship to you and also to become a person who, when given the opportunity, will uh, always be prepared to yeah. give a reason mm -hmm. for the hope that lies within them and to do it with gentleness. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before you, now, before you go, Maria, what's your neighbor's first name? I know, I don't know the first name, but I know their last name is Flores. Florence, okay. Listen, um, all of you who are listening to our program, I want you to be praying for Mr. and Mrs. Flores, and I look forward to hearing a report from Maria down the road very soon, okay? You thank call you. back if it happens, okay, Maria? Yes, I will. Thank all you right, so much thank for you. your time. Thank uh -huh. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Steve, we had a question off of the air, and I'm, I'm going to try to boil it down like this. I think this is what the question is. Oh, what It starts with the statement, with, with the, the supposition, that when a person becomes a believer, part of becoming a believer is confessing their sins. But after they become a believer, then is there a need to confess their sins as they commit them, or should they uh, not confess their sins? And this is a question that many people struggle with. So what, is your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the first, the first part of it is correct. Uh, that God has granted us, as uh, I think it was Peter who said, repentance, maybe it was Paul, repentance unto life. Mm. Um, Good point. And um, so if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe it in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Now, I want to stop you there for a moment and just make sure that verse that you just said, which, of course, is one that I would use all the time in leading someone to the Lord, says nothing about confessing our sins. Right. I'm getting there. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Then. So we have to start with that. Okay. Because some people jump the gun and think they're Christians when they're not. And so yeah. repentance and part of what Kenny, I thought, uh, communicated to us is what is repentance. And um, it's a change. It comes from the Greek word that means a change of mind that leads to a change of action. Okay. Um, the Greek word is metanoia. Good. So um, once that occurs, you've invited Christ Jesus as Lord. That means you've invited him into your life. Now, um, uh, if you read the book of 1 John, you will run into this the answer right away. If you say you do not sin, if, if you say, uh, I'm not a sinner, uh, you lie, and, or, and sometimes it says you're not the in the truth, truth not, not in, in you. you. Yeah, so it's, that's saying if you, if you say you're not a sinner or that you have no sin, you're not a believer. Right. You're not, a, you're not in Christ. The truth is not in you. He says, I write to you that you won't sin, but when you do sin, mm -hmm. you confess your sins. Mm-hmm. And so all, reading the book of First John chapter 1 will just give just draw the light from chapter 1, verse 5, uh, all the way to verse number 10. Okay. And so if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins. And to cleanse you and from all And to cleanse all you from, from, from all unrighteousness. And so confession is a continuing part of your life because if you say you don't sin, you, you lie. Okay. If you... 
um, and I, he writes to you that you won't sin, but if, you uh, but, do. but if you do, you must confess. And so the idea is the pattern of your life will not be that you live a sinful life, but you, when you sin, if you confess it, which means you say the same as, the word confession means to say the same as, then you understand it the same way God understands it. Okay. And um, there are some religions that say, now, if I forgot a sin and I didn't confess it, then I won't go to heaven because I didn't confess that sin, and so I've lost my salvation. But that's not right either. All right, good. So now, <laughs> let's go, I'd like to just uh, throw in something that happened uh, in the life of Jesus that I think um, matches up perfectly with uh, 1 John, and perhaps why John wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, at a, at a dinner table, Jesus gets up and he begins washing the disciples' feet, and John's there. And Peter says, you can't wash my feet. And Jesus says, unless I wash your feet, you have no, I have no part with you. And John says in 1 John, and if, if you say you don't have any sin, then the truth's not in you. I right. think he got that from Jesus. So then Peter says, well, wash all of me. And Jesus says, no, I don't need to wash all of you because of the word that I've spoken to you. I just simply need to wash your feet. And so you have this salvation. And so in this salvation, as Romans says, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So you don't need to be afraid that your sins are going to cast you into hell. But on the, and so you have this forgiveness of sin. On the other hand, just as what happened with Peter and Jesus... And, and Jesus looks at Peter and, and, and says, you have need of me to wash your feet. And so uh, Peter's like, well, not just my feet, but my head, my everything. When I sin, when I, I myself sin, it's not an issue of do I need to confess my sin. It's an issue of I can't stand it if I don't. I, I, I come to him and I say to him, look, you said in your word that I'm not supposed to do this, and yet here I have done it, and I am so sorry. I'm not saying sorry to him in order to get forgiveness. I'm saying sorry for, to him because my heart wants to say I'm sorry. And if, if you approach it as an act of law, you're probably in the wrong place anyway. Yes, and so First John chapter 2 talks about how he provided for forgiveness. Yes. He's the atoning sacrifice. And then it says, as you, as you walk, you're to walk as Jesus walked. Yes. Chapter 2, verse 6. Yes. I'm skipping things, but the idea is right there, that, that you, you can't walk with God without and live the fullness of the Christian life and walk like Jesus unless you, and le- and you, unless keep, you on sinning. Keep, yeah. keep on sinning. And so in the final analysis and just concluding the, the show with this thought, When you come to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior, you repent of your sins in order to begin the relationship. And after you become a Christian, when you sin, you talk to him about those in order to keep the relationship, not as though you could lose it, but to keep in, in a, in a right relationship with you, with him. And it's, it's, it's more for your conscience sake. So I hope that that makes it as clear as mud. So thank you for uh, your phone calls today and for praying with us, and we'll see you next week with more Prayer and Answers. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at this same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus is the way.